Hi, I'm Deborah Rosen, and for the past 20 years, I've been educating and training people and their companion dogs using the science of canine behavior. What I love to do best is help people create peaceful living with their dogs. Please stay tuned for another informative episode of Dog Dish. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Deborah. And welcome to everyone tuned into Dog Dish. We are here today to talk about one of our favorite, not so much, <laughs> subjects, which you're going to introduce for us, right? Right. Okay, so, go for it. Resource guarding. My lovely German Shepherd is a delight 90% of the time. But whenever we have another dog in the house, which is frequently these days, any time they pick up some, a toy that she hasn't had any interest in months, she will go take it from them. If they have a treat, she will try to go take it from them. If they're sitting next to me and I'm giving them love and affection, she will come and shove her way between me and the other dog. And she's never aggressive. She's just an asshole. And <laughs> I would like to know how to work on that with her. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mira. Thank so you, Mira. Dear. Thank you for providing us for a, a subject for our podcast. Um, so resource guarding, um, and we talk about this a lot in our advanced meet and greet class, as you know, Yeah. and it is one of the most common behaviors in companion dogs, period, case closed. It just is. People right. like to think that their dogs aren't assholes and can't <laughs> can't elicit those kinds of behaviors. And largely, you know, when they come out, like with Mira, they're not dangerous behaviors, but they can develop into dangerous behaviors with the right, I, when I say right, I mean the wrong ke right. chemistry between two or more dogs uh -huh. um, and and resource behavior resource guarding behavior can also be something that dogs do um, with humans mm -hmm. as well as other as well as other dogs so you know what I'd like to do is talk about initially talk about what could be a seem like a very benign behavior which is, you know, you've got a bone and the other dog has a bone and they're exactly the same bone. They even came, it's a, let's say it's a bully stick that you sliced in half and gave uh -huh. one dog one side and the other dog the other. Yep, been there, done that. And every time you do, the, one of them will drop it and the other will go snatch it away and then the other one will snatch the one that they had. Uh -huh. And it'll just keep going like that indefinitely. Yes. That is a very benign form of resource guarding. But it can escalate. Like, for example, and, and I'm not picking on golden retrievers right now, but <laughs> I, 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 want, I want people to know that this is an equal opportunity behavior. It happens in every breed and with both sexes and at various ages. So it's not an age specific. It's not a breed specific. And it's certainly not a gendered specific behavior. Right. So, so essentially what, what happened to me was I was um, conducting uh, a puppy kindergarten class. And this was years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Before I knew enough to know that I didn't know enough. <laughs> All right. And I, I, gotcha. had, yeah, I had this 12 week old uh, puppy, a golden retriever puppy named mm -hmm. Ryder. And Ryder, I talk about Ryder a lot in my classes because he had, get this, a cheese wrapper. <laughs> the most delicious cup. of wrappers. Apparently, yeah. I mean, it didn't even have a speck of cheese left in it. The, the cheese, it was string cheese, so the whole, right. yeah. the whole thing was gone. Uh -huh. um, but he had clamped onto that thing like it was his last cheese ever. <laughs> or, you know, in this case, last cheese wrapper ever. Uh -huh stupidly in my naivete in my in my <laughs> early training career I thought I could just go get that cheese wrapper out of his mouth so he right. didn't swallow it he bit me oh let's talk about an asshole 
<laughs> that puppy bit me. All right. And so I learned the hard way that that was not something you can always assume mm-hmm. that you can do. All right. So what are the remedies? Yes. First and foremost, what, what I probably should have done. I mean, I can't say for sure because I didn't do it, but I've done it. I've done it again since with many other dogs. Uh-huh. It, I could have baited and switched him. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean in training terms? That means you come up with something that's a higher value than that wrapper, which in his case would probably have been cheese. Actual cheese, right? Yeah, <laughs> it might not. You uh-huh. know, some dogs are that odd that, you know, other things assume a higher value for whatever reason mm-hmm. that we as human beings couldn't begin to figure out, right? Right. But, you know, you, you find something that's a higher value and and you, you offer it. And when mm-hmm. he takes it, he drops the cheese wrapper, you put it away. And, and you know, Christina, this is, these are cases where the dog could swallow something dangerous. I, I had, uh-huh. and again, I'm not meaning to pick on golden retrievers, but I had a golden retriever lab mix named Bailey. Mm-hmm. It was called after she had grabbed um, a garden glove and swallowed it oh, and needed to have $3,000 surgery because oh. it, it would not pass through her, right. I think it was her small intestines. So oh. they had to go into surgically into her small intestines and retrieve this mm-hmm. thing. And she would literally grab anything she wouldn't try to bite you, but she would swallow it. So, you know, in a way that that's also resource guarding. And so, and and then finally, I'm going to tell you about Milo, Mm -hmm. who is an ultimate doodle. The ultimate doodle. They actually have a name for this blend of Labradoodle, Golden Doodle, and this particular breeder calls it an ultimate doodle. Wow, that's a lot of doodles. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was really a great dog. He had some reactivity. He went through advanced meet and greet, but he would, I was called in by his owners who I had already done a lot of work with mm-hmm. on him privately and in group classes. And what, what Milo was doing was he was taking this one synthetic bone that was a, you know, a man-made factory, right. made bone, not a, even a, a, a real legitimate bone Mm -hmm. and he was trying to bite them over it oh my gosh if they would try to retrieve it for whatever reason Mm -hmm. snap at them so I literally went there and I took a full hour to get him to discharge the bone without being touched Mm -hmm. okay and I can coach people through this one and you you know what leave it take it mine is yeah you want to you want to tell folks about that and then I'll tell them how I worked with Milo with it. So leave it, take it, mine is, so we have a treat and we put it in front of their little face and say, leave it in our big stern voice. And when soon as they back up from that, we tell them to take it in their happy voice and they get to take it. Mine is taking something out of their mouth. So if they have it in their mouth and I say mine, then I can take it out of their mouth. And eventually that builds up into, I say mine and they spew it out. Right, exactly. And it's not even just, mine and and uh you take it out of their mouth it's mine and they release it right they release it it's a release um command Mm -hmm. and and that's essentially what i did with milo i basically took um his synthetic bone and i played leave Mm -hmm. it take it mine Mm -hmm. and then i would gently hold it and i'd say mine and um I, I wouldn't uh, treat him or reward him until he actually basically opened up his mouth on his own, okay? So it would be uh, take it and then I'd mine and he'd, mm-hmm. he'd open until finally I, I would take my hand away and I'd say mine and he'd, he'd spit it out. Nice. You know, and it may sound, we're making it sound a little bit easier than it really is. Uh-huh. Um, and admittedly, there is some skill to this and there is some some technique, which, you know, of course, we're always here to help with for people who are either nearby um, 
typically it's 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 helpful if, if you're nearby because right. this this is something that we can't really do on zoom mm -hmm. um but you know you, you all have i'm sure anyone who's looking at this who's not local you all have good trainers just make sure that they're trainers who understand the science of canine behavior they understand behavior modification and they've studied classical and operant conditioning techniques as it applies to dogs. I mean, people shake their heads, yes, that they know what operant classical conditioning is, but it's a little bit more complicated when it comes to the actual practical application of it. Um, do you have a misbehaving puppy there? Just a little bit, yeah. Is that, is that Waffles? It is Waffles. Yeah, well, folks, we just uh, taped an, oh yeah. There's your Waffles. He's going home in about an hour, and this is the first puppy in a really long time. I'm actually sad. Usually by the end of a two or three week boarding train, <laughs> I'm ready to have my house and my dogs are ready to have their space again and, and not have a naughty little puppy nipping at them. And really? But this guy... I mean, look at this face. Yeah, I know. I'd have him in a minute. You know, my <laughs> friend said that he reminds her of Andy Rooney because of the <laughs> eyebrows. Show everybody the, the eyebrows again. Look at the eyebrows. Oh, my God. Oh, eyebrows. He is <laughs> really a, an actual teddy bear. He is a sweetheart. Oops. Um, this is about resource guarding. Resource guarding is no easy thing if you've got a really bad case of it. So if you do and you don't feel equipped to deal with it, please get some help. Please get some help, all right? Because because people could get hurt. It could uh, become a really big fight between dogs. And um, please, if you have a resource guarding dog and you have children, especially younger children, keep them away from the dog when the dog is playing or engaged in an activity with an item that they guard, all right? All okay, right. folks. Well, this has been Dog Dish with Deborah and Christina. Hey. <laughs> and we'll see you again very, very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Trying to find.